Hello and welcome back to our channel. I'm Colleen and this is Our Blessed Life. And today we're going to be talking about moving beyond the high school transcript for homeschoolers. What is the course description and what are some reasons that you might need them? So we've already discussed high school transcripts many times on this channel. And if you missed my main video about how to create a high school transcript with a free sample, I'm going to go ahead and link that video up top and down in the description box below. But this video is taking that concept a little bit further and adding to your transcripts course descriptions. And today we're going to talk about how to do it, how it, how easy it is to do it. We're going to, I'm going to show an example of one and kind of walk you through it. And I'm also going to talk about why you might need them. All right. Today's video is also part of our homeschooling in high school series. I have numerous videos on my channel about how to homeschool in high school, um, very specific videos about the high school years as well as the middle school years. Um, if you're taking high school credits in middle school. So I'm going to link that playlist in the description box below. First, we're going to talk about why you need course descriptions. So you might argue with me and say, my student went to college. We never needed course descriptions. This is just extra work. I don't know why you're telling me I need this. Um, and you might be right. The problem though is you don't know you need them until you need them. And at that point, it might be too late to create them because you might not have all of the information necessary. So before we go into how to do it, let's look at three compelling reasons that you should have course descriptions for every course that's getting high school credit. So the first reason that you might need course descriptions is if your student is applying to a college and in the process of that application, they the college requests more information about many classes or even just one class beyond what is going to be on the transcript. So your transcript is going to have the name of the course, the credits that were given, the, and the grade as well as the GPA. So it's not going to have all of the information for that course on the transcript. The course description is an additional document for a specific class that gives additional information on that class. So if you are in the application of uh, college application process and your student finds out from the college, hey, we see that you took biology one, but we want to have more information um, on this class. What labs did you take? Who was the publisher of the textbook that you used? And so on. That's the type of information that can be found on a course description. And we'll talk about the how to's of that in just a few minutes. So the first reason you might need it is if a college requests it in the application process. Now you're not going to know this until you're in the application process and a college requests it. So you're not going to know ahead of time, you know, whether you need that. I will tell you that with Katie's, Katie only applied to one college. The college that she applied to did not request any course descriptions. Um, however, we only applied to one college. She did get accepted. So, you know, I do know that sometimes colleges will ask and we need to have that information available so that we're not scrambling if they do ask. The second reason that it makes sense to have a course description would be if there's any chance in the future that your life circumstances could change forcing you to make a change in your child's education and put them back in either public school or private school. If that's the case, the um, school counselor is going to sit down with you and they're going to go class by class and subject by subject. They're going to determine which courses that they're going to accept and which courses they are not going to accept. There are times when students are put back a different grade level um, or there are, you know, math courses or science courses that have to be repeated. So the more information that you have on how that course was done, um, it's going to be more likely for that school to accept what was done, especially if they are unfamiliar with the publisher of the textbook or something like that. And the third reason, and this is the reason that this is the primary reason that I made course descriptions in order to have a legitimate high school course. In other words, if we're going to compare ourselves apples to apples to other classes that are done in public or private schools, those schools do have course descriptions. Those schools do set up what the grading methodology is going to be prior to the class happening. So um, I have talked to a lot of people that are homeschooling and they might be like halfway through, you know, an English course and they might contact me and say, I have no idea how to grade this English course. Okay. Well, 
that is something that we all have to learn how to do. You know, we're all learning this as homeschool moms, but we should make those determinations before the class begins. Otherwise, it's kind of like playing a game and changing the rules in the middle of the game. So what we wanna do is set up the course, document everything on the course description, including how it's gonna be graded, what percentage is gonna go for you know essays or tests or quizzes or whatever, and do that before the course starts. That way we have, you know, we're simulating the rigor of a regular course rather than just saying, okay, we can do it any way we want to. We can change the grading in the middle of the course and that kind of thing. That is why I think sometimes it's more difficult to take a homeschool child and put them back in public school because they don't necessarily believe that courses were as rigorous in homeschooling. Now, we know that most of us will hold our child to a different level than the public school probably does because most homeschool parents are trying to achieve mastery of the subject versus just kind of doing it and then moving on. Um, but having a course description, it kind of legitimizes uh, what you did in that class and it's it's kind of like when I talked about doing standardized testing and also when we talked before about um, dual enrollment courses as a way to legitimize your homeschool this is just another way that we should be trying to legitimize what we are doing we're working very hard for our students in our homeschools and we should want our what we have done and what our students have done to be taken seriously when they need to go into the next level of their learning, whether that be college or whatever they're doing next. So those are three reasons why you want to have course descriptions for any courses that are going on your high school transcript. One note that I wanna to add to this is that generally speaking for dual enrollment classes, you probably don't really need to do a course description as long as that course is taken at an accredited college because you will have a college transcript for those courses and those are usually not going to be classes that another college will question. Okay, so now let's talk about what should go in the course description. So they're really easy to make. It's not that much time or trouble. And if you set yourself up a template, you can probably just kind of copy and paste from class to class, especially if you're going from like this year's English to next year's English. You can get most of the information from the publisher of the curriculum company that you are using for your classes. So first I'm gonna talk about what we should be including on these course descriptions. Um, and then I'm gonna show you an example of one that I created and just kind of go um, through it step by step with you. All right, so you're gonna to wanna to have the name of the course as well as the primary textbook that was used along with the publisher and the date. Um, this can be pretty important, especially with science and math courses. Um, for instance, Saxon Math has some pretty significant changes from like, you know, one publishing year to another. So you wanna always make sure that you include the year of publication. You, the main part that people think of as a course description is a brief paragraph that explains what the course is about. It's going to describe the course, the materials used, and that kind of thing. We also want to tell in the course description how many credits will be issued. We also want to talk about what type of credit is going to be issued. Is it going to be a regular um, college prep class, which is just a typical high school class? Is it going to be an honors class? Is it going to be an AP class, et cetera? If it's an hours-based class, which would typically be an elective class, like a PE or you know those types of classes, then you want to state how many hours were completed. Typically, 75 hours is going to equal a half credit and 150 hours is going to equal um, one credit for high school. You also want to include what the grading methodology is. So here we're talking about what actually was graded. Was it quizzes and tests, projects, essays? What were you actually grading? And then what percentage was graded for each one of those things? So what was the percentage that each one counted for. We'll look at an, a specific example of that in a few minutes. All right, we also want to list any additional books or resources that were used. So for example, if it was a history course or an English course, normally you're gonna have additional books that were read. You wanna list all of those, title and author of all of those. If it's a science course that has labs, you wanna list the name of all of the labs that were done because sometimes, especially for certain degrees that your student might be um, applying for at different colleges, they're gonna wanna know what labs were completed for certain courses like chemistry and biology. 
You also want to list how many essays were written or how many additional papers were written. So if it's a science class, possibly how many research papers were written in that class. And then also how many books were read total. If it's an English class, what was the total number of books that were read? And then the last thing to think about including would be um, a description of any additional work that was done. So for example, if it's an honors class, you would want to fully describe the honors project, what made that class rise to the level of an honors class. This information you're going to be able to get either from the textbook itself or you're going to be able to get from the publisher's website from where you got the curriculum. Um, Abeka is really good at providing um, course descriptions. Um, I'm going to show you an example from The Good and the Beautiful High School Year 3 from The Good and the Beautiful where I kind of took bits and pieces that they had on their website and then added my own information to it. So let's go ahead and look at a course description. Like I said, this is from The Good and the Beautiful High School Year 3. It's going to be, um, it was what we used for um, Katie's Junior Year English and it was also the year that we did British Literature. So I'm going to show you how I gave her credit for English and also how I set it up as a British Lit course. Alright, so at the top of the page we have Course Description English 3 British Literature. Then we give our course name is just English 3 British Literature. You can um, make these in a Word document. I have them in Pages document. I'm going to have this um, attached below in the description box as a PDF file and also as a um, Pages file, which is um, from a Mac computer. So if you have, if you don't have the ability to use Pages, you could look at the PDF file and just kind of copy it. Um, but again, this is not a set in stone um, format to use. It does provide the information necessary if you were to need a course description. So the course description is just a paragraph of what the, of, of what the course was about. Um, I said this is a British literature course. The course focuses, and this part came from The Good and the Beautiful, on strong writing skills and preparing students for college level courses and combines the following subjects, literature, writing, grammar, usage, punctuation, spelling, vocabulary, geography, art, and art history. The student will complete 10 booklets which guide the student through the assignments. Online video and reading books are integrated in the course. A test will be administered at the conclusion of each of the 10 units and reading and writing assignments are spread throughout the course. All right, and then under that, I listed the books that are included in the Good and the Beautiful High School Year 3. The Good and the Beautiful Classic Short Story Collection, The Little Duke by Charlotte Young, Florence Nightingale, The Angel of Crimea by Laura Richards, The Call of the Woods, and Edgar Guest Collection. Then under that, I added additional books read. In addition to the course description above, the following plays and books by British authors are also included in the course. Hamlet by William Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare, A Midsummer Night's Dream by William Shakespeare, Paradise Lost by John Milton, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, and A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. I listed that it's a one credit course and it's an honors course. And the grading methods that I used were 25% for unit studies, 25% for essays, 35% for tests, and 15% for the honors project. 12 essays were written and 12 books were read, or I'm including in that plays, short story books, and regular novels. And then the last thing I have on here is a description of the honors project. An additional book study has been added to the course for honors credit. The book study is the book Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. The book, the book study includes comprehension questions, vocabulary exercises, and information on how to read and analyze a response paper. Two writing assignments, a response paper, and an analysis paper are also included as part of the book study. All right, so that's an example of how you would put one together. And that one is based on um, English, or possibly you could use it as history. If you were doing a science class, then you would take out the extra books written and probably change that to um, labs completed and then list the labs. And then instead of the number of essays, you might put the number of labs. Um, okay, so that that's how you would do it. And you can add or delete information from that, but you just want those basic things about the course listed in your course description. I hope this information was helpful for you. I've linked the sample, um, like I said, in the description box below if you'd like to take a closer look at that as you create course descriptions of your own. If you have any questions about this, please leave me comments in the comments below and I'll answer those the best I can. Also, if you have any additional video ideas for homeschooling in high school, 
go ahead and leave those in the comments as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye. You see